a wonderful semester. My presentation is going to be on how to make drinking wine by Daniel Chavez. Here you go, you and your friends enjoying a nice glass of wine. So this is a wonderful uh, chemistry poster we have in our department. Uh, as you can see, wine is made up of 86% uh, water, 12% ethanol, which is alcohol, which is the feel-good chemical. 1% um, glycerol, 0.4% of organic acids, 0.1% of tannins and phenolics, and 0.5% of other compounds. With uh, the four main features here, anthocyanins, tannins, flavin-3-alls, and flavanols, which we will get more into. It's a nice photo right there of a wine bottle with glass, different variations of flavor, chocolate, cinnamon. We got raisins there, blueberries. Um, you can really make a lot of things out of, you can make wine out of a lot of things. So the history of wine uh, goes out to the Caucasus uh, Mountains, uh, Georgia being praised as the cradle of wine. Uh, here's the Caucasus Mountains uh, with Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia, Iran, um, and other parts of the Middle East right there, uh, which have carbon dated uh, certain uh, pots to find out that they've been the longest uh, makers of wine, uh, Georgia. So here is the Greek expansion from the Caucasus Mountains into the Black Sea, through the Mediterranean, um, into northern parts of Africa, southern parts of France and uh, Spain right there. As you can see, uh, lots of influence in the Greek expansion. Croatia, Hungary, Ukraine, Georgia, Turkey, all have uh, under 40 different varieties of grape strains, um, with currently Italy leading the pact with over 377 different types of grapes, and France with 204. These are these large uh, clay barrels that they used to use in Georgia, which they would uh, bury underground in order to keep the wine fermenting at a nice, uh, common, even, temperate and as you can see, temperate climate, and as you can see, the shape of the barrel helps in uh, the settling of everything on the bottom of the, the barrel. So the torpedo-like design actually did help. So 8,000 years of history with wine. We have different types of wine, which are called Saparavi, Rakatsitili, and other types right there, which I have a hard time pronunciating. Um, this is an Egyptian a wine clay pot, which um, was found to be somewhere around 5,000 BC or so. And this is the now more conventional methods of uh, creating wine. Uh, the unconventional materials there were like in antique times, antiquity, clay, concrete, um, obviously used some sort of wood chips to uh, either heat it up to speed up the, the reactions. As you can see, now conventional methods are uh, traditional woods, alternative woods, um, which pretty much help with the phenolic and aromatic compounds um, and aging time, uh, obviously how long you keep it in the bottle in the barrel. This is another diagram from the harvesting of grapes to the preparing and adding yeast, which creates a fermentation, pressing, aging, and then blending of the wines, clarifying of the wines, sometimes with uh, egg whites or vegan uh, bentonite clay, which helps uh, remove proteins and thus the bottling process and the bottle aging. So young versus aged wines. Young wines are considered to be less than two years with less acetaldehyde. Aged wines um, are over three years with the lowest polyphenols and reserves are considered to be three years minimum with six months in oak barrels. So here's the grape selections that we have from white wines to red wines. Uh, we have wine grapes there. Uh, the genus is called the Vitis, and as you can see, these lovely diagrams, other different types of grapes with cool names, Champagne, obviously, Cotton Candy, Concord, Thomcord, Flame Seedless. Um, so what's the difference between barrel aging and barrel fermenting? Uh, barrel fermenting was actually the first way in which it was created, in which the fermentation cre uh, occurs in the barrel, while um, barrel fermenting causes more rich and deeper flavors while barrel aging um, is, was a process that came with a technique through time. And as you can see here, there are different colors of uh, the wood that has gotten toasted, as I'll show you in the next diagram. Here are all these uh, hoops, the rivets, uh, bunghole, the way that obviously the barrel is made. Here's the flaming process, and how dark and deep the, the color is will 
uh, give you a different taste as you can see up here. So how do you go about this? Uh, you select the timber, you start sawing off the staves, um, season the wood, give it a precision cut, and the toasting and steaming, uh, which then uh, an integrity of the case and resistance is, is obviously examined, and the barrel is ready for use. Um, the more that the, the barrel is used, or the older that it is, um, the more integrity that the wine will have. So types of wood used is French common oak, white oak, American white oak, Mizunara oak, which is more exotic, and Oregon oak. Um, basic do it, your, do it at home for yourself. Or, you know, if you ever get locked up, this is the best way of doing it. Get some grapefruit juice, um, sugar, yeast. Um, the balloon is there in order to see the reaction of uh, the oxygen that's coming out in the oxidation process. So obviously in the yeast, uh, the yeast process in wine making, there's bacterial metabolism, uh, bacterial respiration, and the composition is constantly changing, which I will get more into. This is a diagram of Cabernet Sauvignon, um, which I will get more into this right here. Here's an HNMR showing you the parts per billion. Um, the less that it has, the better that it seems that the wine is with the screen check mark. Um, let's see, so the beginning of the wine oxidation reaction occurs with the creation of quinone right here. Here's the stepwise reaction. With the creation of quinone, um, then there's the creation of ethanol, which is the second part uh, considered of the ethanol creates um, acetaldehyde uh, through this hydroxyl uh, radical. There's the reaction between flavanol and acetaldehyde. So as you can see, this functional group attaches uh, down here to when to then hydrogen is added and then this other uh, carbonyl is then attached. So this is uh, sulfur dioxide uh, and azorbic acid and how they uh, react with the phenol into the phenolate into the quinone and back into this cyclical reaction. So this is the all the reactions all put together as you can see here's the quinone Here's a semiquinone radical, which we saw in the other diagram. Here's anthocyanins. And this is pretty much a, could be a little bit more confusing diagram to see. There's another uh, diagram of benzoquinone, uh, the brown pigments that occur. It's the nucleophilic additions into uh, what's called a Strecker reaction in which aldehydes form. So in this uh, YouTube video, it's a Welch's to wine, which I will fast forward to about the six minute mark, to when you really this see the oxidation right and the difference between, the one on the left is made with SAF yeast, which is uh, some sort of instant yeast, while the Red Star yeast gives it a different type of This is of our reaction. Red Star yeast, and look at it. She's going to town. Very fast right? reaction, so that's good. as you that's can tell. That's what we want to see. Now on the other hand, and, but the other one uh, seems to have not as fast. Now, she does not look but more reactive. like she's working as hard as this one, but she is in fact doing her own thing. So when you skip ahead, there's a seven day at home wine fermentation process, which we have done uh, in Chem 80. Interestingly enough, here's a, a chart of glycolysis, uh, which gl glucose turns into pyruvate into then ethanol and lactate, a more simple version. So what is slavin 3 all? It's also called captecin, which is phenolic antioxidant, which originates from the grape seed. As, you, as I showed earlier today, there was um, seedless grapes, also that, you know, when you buy in the market, which obviously the seedless ones will have less flavin 3 all, which um, that actually gives a more bitter taste to the wine. So 20 milligrams per liter will give you and impart you some, uh, that bitter taste, while some wines have anywhere up to 800 milligrams per liter. So it um, seems that Flavin 3-all uh, was consistent with lower inflammation scores, so aiding in circulation, uh, which I know if you've heard, uh, wine could be good for the heart, is what they say. These are tannins. Um, tannins are water-soluble polyphenols and polymers uh, within wine. So these are actually just um, a lot of uh, Flavin 3 nols Flavin 3 alls, as you can see. And so the high tannins means uh, more stringency and bitter bitterness, and less tannins obviously is the opposite effect. So anthocyanins, this is another one that which was featured on that poster. As you can see, all the different R groups 
our three prime, four prime, and you can see these uh, phenolic rings right here. So background anthocyanins was uh, found by German pharmacist Ludwig Marquat. So it's actually the compound that gives uh, flowers a blue color and gives uh, pretty much fruits a, a rich taste, a rich, uh, rich colors like blueberries, raspberries, black rice, black soybeans. Um, it's found in grape skins, radishes, acai, um, hibiscus, which is uh, known as the drink, the Mexican drink uh, called Jamaica, made out of the hibiscus plant. So these are the different anthocyanin contents in each of these food sources. As you can see, a black crowberry has a lot per every 100 uh, grams. And in case study, we have El Echeto, which is a winery based out of Baja, California. Uh, which I have gone to as a kid many a times, uh, which I wanted to showcase. Uh, it is uh, 88 years in production, three family generations, sold in 27 different countries. So uh, it's actually huge. It has about uh, 1,600 hectare acres. One hectare acre is about uh, 10,000 square meters, which is about the size of a fo football field. So that's about uh, 1,600 football fields. Um, this is the winemaker of um, who was very popular with the third, with the grandson and the, the winemaker of Nebbiolo. Um, and L.A. Chetto has won over 127 international prizes and 25 countries. So I hope that I gave you a good introduction on, brief introduction on what the wine synthesis process is um, and how these different uh, organic chemicals um, help and come apart to the process of making a good and delicious wine. So thank you very much for your time, and that is my presentation. Have a good semester.